today we want to show you guys a basic one gallon mead recipe. We really want to make this process approachable and obtainable for people making their very first batch of mead. It's super simple, we think anyone can do it, and this process should allow you to uh, determine if this is going to be a hobby that you want to do and um, give you fantastic results at the end. Hopefully you feel inspired and really excited by this and want to go make your first batch. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. We're going to tell you guys uh, the different type of ingredients you're going to need. We're going to tell you about the different equipment that you'll need. And finally, the process itself, how to get the best results. So all in, I think I estimated, you know, with the ingredients and all of the equipment that we could probably brew our first batch of mead under 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. All right. All right. So you're going to need a five gallon bucket, some sanitizer, a hydrometer, a drill, a stirrer. Well, <laughs> uh, I guess you don't need the drill, but you could use a spoon too if you want. And you're going to need a glass jar of some sort with a airtight seal, an airlock, some yeast. I'm using Safeil 05. You're going to need some yeast nutrient, some honey, about three pounds. And I guess you don't need the extra mead, no. but you know, <laughs> we did show that, want to show this for reference. You know, you can get your fancy labels to do yourself and really get a professional looking bottle of mead, but we'll put that aside. So let's go into a little bit more detail though. So honey, what's special about this? Like, where did you get this? Like, how much did it cost? Like, what are you looking for in the type of honey you're going to use for mead? Well, in this particular one, we're just we're doing a flavored mead, and so I've gotten the cheapest honey I can find. It's from Walmart. It's called Pure and Simple Honey, and there's no point in paying a lot of money for a really flavorful honey if you're just going to mask it over with fruit. So the name of this game was just cheap, and uh, if you're looking for a flavored one, just buy it at Walmart. And for your first batch, we would recommend not sinking a lot of money in honey. You can get really expensive honey that tastes phenomenal but uh, if you're not sure if you've never done this before you're not sure if it's going to be right for you go with something that's on the low end it may not produce like the best tasting honey wine mead but it's going to give you decent results and you're not going to you know throw a lot of money down the drain if something goes wrong yeah so let's talk about a little bit the the yeast and this yeast nutrient that you mentioned so the yeast nutrient, I don't really know what's in it, but it's got like a starter in it and it's supposed to be good for the yeast health. It's got all the nutrients they need. And so I just follow the instructions for this thing and pour a little bit in with it. And so it should really help get us a good strong fermentation from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So, and then the yeast that you're using, this uh, dry ale yeast, uh, South Ale US number five. But what's special about this? Mm -hmm. This one's just supposed to be a pretty good kind of neutral yeast. So like I, like I said, we're making a blackberry one. So it's going to really overpower any kind of yeast flavors that you really will get. So it's just kind of a middle of the road yeast that's really reliable and it's going to give you a pretty good flavor most of the time. Now for people watching today, we're just doing, you know, our first basic one gallon batch of mead. We're not going to try to tell you guys how to do any particular flavors. We just happen to have the blackberries and so we're gonna throw that in off camera. But for other people looking yeah. at their yeast, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, you don't wanna go buy like Fleischmann's like active dry yeast off the shelf. You're, shelf. you're not looking for um, bread yeast. You're looking for something that's meant for brewing. Mm -hmm. So what other types of yeast can people use? Probably the best one if you're, you're trying to get the flavor of the honey would be the White Labs sweet mead yeast. That one's really good. Yeah, yeah, and I remember correctly, our very first batch of yeast, we actually used that one, and it was drinkable right out of, like basically right out of fermentation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're brewing your first batch, go pick up a White Labs yeast. It's gonna be high quality stuff. It's gonna set you up for success, and you're going to get results faster, right? Okay, now let's talk about the fermenter. Well, the fermenter, these are the ones I use, and there's plenty of things that you can get that are going to work for a fermenter, but this one I like because it's got a 
a wide mouth in it. So if you've got stuff in there that you're flavoring it with, you can get your hand in there. And it's a lot easier to clean when you're all done instead of like a narrow neck bottle where you got to get a, like a pipe cleaner in there or whatever. And the lid here, it's got this little gasket at hole, right? So this is where the airlock fits into. Mm -hmm. And I think if I look this up, this fermenter, you can pick it up off of Amazon for less than 15 bucks, mm -hmm. right? So we'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are looking to find all of these different pieces of equipment. Like honestly, like everything here you can find off of Amazon. Have it prime now. You can have it to you tomorrow, right? Yep. Yep. So let's talk about the airlock. It's just a regular old airlock <laughs> again. We've got a half dozen of them and yeah. So this is a three piece airlock, right? right? So, you know, the first piece is the cap. And then inside you have the bell. So this is a single piece here. It's got a stem. And inside this airlock, there's actually a bit of a line in here. So the bell goes in and you actually fill this up with, you know, most of the time water, right? Some people use sanitizer. And what this does is as, you know, the process, the yeast uh, ferments inside here, carbon dioxide builds up. And so that air needs a way to relieve out of the vessel. So you stick this in and the air will come up and uh, through this bell and as it rises up through the water the air will come back down and out the top of the airlock and it's a really good way to see when fermentation is happening so just because you don't see bubbles coming up doesn't mean it's not fermenting but it's a really good indication that if fermentation is yeah. happening really quickly then you can see it yeah so uh, we've also seen that with really, really active fermentation that um, you might get spillage, like it might bubble up into the airlock. And so if you see, if you've seen the F-shaped ones, we've seen where the wart or must or whatever it is you're, you're brewing with actually gets pushed up into the airlock. And those S-shaped ones, I think are really hard to clean. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell, tell us why you have the drill. Well, uh, the way you can do it is just using a spoon, but uh, it gets really tiring trying to get that honey to blend with the water sometimes. So if you get a paint stirrer and a drill, you can cut the time in like a quarter. Yeah, and we'll uh, show you guys that process. Super easy. But it also helps dissolve oxygen into your, into your mead and helps the yeast get happy when they first start out. So oxygen though, like we hear a lot of people talk about oxygen. So oxygen is good. At the beginning, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that just helps keep the yeast like happy, helps it start growing and yeah. multiplying and all of that good stuff. Yep. Okay. Now finally, let's talk about, you know, these last few pieces here. Okay. So the hydrometer, we're just going to use it to take a sample of it and then take a reading of our, of our wort. And what are we reading? We're reading the specific gravity. So it's going to tell you the density of your your liquid in regards to water. So we want one that's gonna be more dense than water. And why is that? Because we're adding honey in it, which is more dense than water, so. So for people reading the, <laughs> or watching um, on YouTube, why do we want a higher specific gravity? Oh, more, <laughs> <laughs> more alcohol. Right, right. So the more, the, the higher the specific gravity, the sweeter our liquid is. And then that's going to mean more alcohol in at the end of the finished product. So that specific gravity, you know, if it's upwards, you know, what what's the original starting gravities that you usually see in your knees? Like 0.125. That's pretty high, right? Mm -hmm. And so what ABV do you end up with in a mead no, like that? That'd probably be around like anywhere from 12 to 15 percent. Pretty strong stuff, yeah. right? So, you know, comparatively, if you're a home brewer for like beer or wine or a cider, you might see starting gravities, what, 0 0.08, 0 0.1 maybe, and then um, trying to get down to one through the fermentation process. Because that yeast, it's going to eat the sugars and then it'll turn that sugar into alcohol. Mm -hmm. All right, finally, star sand. So this is just your pretty basic brewing sanitizer and yeah you just need it <laughs> <laughs> and it's really important right because yeah. we want to make sure that every single one of these things that are going to touch our final product are sanitary like 
you know, I could cough on this, ha, ha, get COVID on it, and then end up with that bacteria <laughs> in our finished product. Yeah. And so we don't want that happening. We want something that's super clean. We don't want any contaminants in it. And uh, it, you're just gonna end up with a clean fermentation. So without further ado, we're gonna mix up the sanitizer. We're gonna get everything sanitized. We're gonna show you the process along the way. And, you know, we've taken a long time to explain, but I bet you guys, you know, within, I don't know, 10 minutes, we're going to have our mead chilling out in the closet fermenting, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. All right, so first just grab your star sand. Follow the instructions on the back. It says one ounce for five gallons. So I've got a five gallon bucket here. All you do is you loosen that one up. Squeeze the bottle until you get an ounce. Ready to pour it in. I don't like to pour it in. It's all well done. All right, so now we just gotta drop everything in, right? Well, yeah, but I gotta loosen up the honey. All right, great point. So that's the problem with the cheap stuff. Right. It's, so it's actually that's not very biscuit. So that's not gonna pour very well. So <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna boil some water. Too. Right. So just boiling a pot of water on the stove. Or We're just gonna need to boil just. Warm it up, right? Because we don't want to melt the plastic either, right? So we're just going to warm up a pot of water in the stove here. Uh, we're going to stick this in it, and it should help loosen up the honey. It'll make it more viscous so it's easier to pour. And if you can see right now, like that honey is not going anywhere. Um, there's no way we're going to be able to get this into our fermenter here uh, without a little bit of help. So set it up over there. And so then now, well, this can start sanitizing. And how long, what's the process here? How long does this need to sit in the sanitizer? I think it's just a couple minutes, but yeah, I just leave it in there for like a minute. Get this out of here. So the honey, we've warmed it up on the pot on the stove <laughs> and now it's much more viscous. We're just going to ignore the mess here. Mm -hmm. It gets a little messy when we brew sometimes. But if you check it out now, this honey is super viscous. It's ready to go. It's ready. Now, in unprocessed, unfiltered, completely raw honey, this shouldn't be an issue. Um, some of the cheaper honeys, you might find the manufacturer added more water to make it more viscous. It's just easier to pour, easier to deal with in bulk, and it makes it cheaper. Um, with stuff you might find at like your local farmer's market or if you support a local beekeeper, then uh, that stuff is going to be super pure. It shouldn't crystallize on you. It shouldn't harden on you. But sometimes with processed honey, you will see some crystallization, some hardenization over time with this type of stuff. So I'm just going to put three pounds in here. That's kind of like the benchmark. So three pounds per gallon. All right, so <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna fill this up to, how, how high do we wanna go with water? About there. <laughs> About where it yeah. starts curving in? Yeah, you just wanna leave enough air for like, or enough room for the bubbles to form. So we filled it up with our sterile water, and now we're just gonna mix it up with our paint stirrer. Like honestly, like this tool has been the one of the best things that we bought for meat making. So we've got our mead all mixed up. What are we doing next? We gotta get a sample of it with our turkey baster here. <laughs> and so this is just a regular old kitchen turkey baster. What else can you use? Like I'm sure I believe I've seen wine leaves, right? Yeah, so that's a good one. or like auto siphons. I mean like but honestly it's something simple. Not siphon, I don't auto siphon. Ready? Mm-hmm.
And how filled, full do we want to fill up the hydrometer? It's about three quarters. And then we're going to pop our thingamabobber in there. What do you call it? But this is the actual hydrometer itself. So there are a few bubbles on this, so I'm going to try the spinny trick again. It's really high. Yeah, it looks pretty high. That's all right. That's good. So it looks like it's 1.134. All right, so I'm going to grab my notebook here, just out of shot. So next, um, the yeast. So we're just gonna pour this safe ale in there. And it's always good to like sterilize your scissors. Cause like as you're cutting open the package, you know, like there's just like you can get a little bit in there. little bit of contamination. Now you're so, just pouring this right in. Yeah. What is that? Well, on this one, it just says to pitch it right into the wort. At like room temperature. Uh, some of the other ones will say like, you know, rejuvenate, rehydrate, rehydrate the yeast at right. 100 degrees. But this one says just pour it in. And I, I did it once before with this stuff and it works. So I'm just going to do it again. But typically I just follow the instructions on the back of that packet. Yeah, it's <laughs> super important. Every manufacturer is different and uh, each yeast is going to be different. Now, if you're using like the White Lab sweet meat yeast, that's a liquid yeast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so that one, you know, you don't necessarily need to rehydrate, but you may need a starter for it. It really depends, you know, on the manufacturer, what the recipe it is that you're using and um, the whole, whole factor there. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is good for five gallons and we're making one gallon, so... It's, now it's there, gonna be nice and happy. <laughs> is there any harm in putting more yeast than what's called for? No, because the yeast multiplies like a ton as soon as it starts like fermenting. So you're just giving it a leg up on the fermentation process process by giving it a bunch of extra. But yeast. you don't want to give you don't want to put in too little yeast, right? Uh, no, typically. Because it's it's gonna really it struggle, took, right? You probably could. It's just going to take a whole lot longer yeah. to get that fermentation going and get a really good strong yeast colony in your mead. Mm -hmm. So when are we going to put in the yeast nutrient? So that one says you're supposed to put it in after the first signs of fermentation. So we're going to wait until we see some bubbles. All right. And when do we think that might happen? It should be tomorrow morning. Last step? Yeah, last step. So just fill it up. I like to use the sanitizer. You just fill it up to this little line in there, drop your bobber or whatever in there, the float. The bell. The bell. <laughs> and get that nice and sanitized and put it in. That's it. And that's it. Yep. So when can we drink this? It should be like two weeks to four weeks. Ready, like done with fermentation, or ready, like ready to well, drink. Well, I guess you could you could drink it after that time, but generally you want to age it for like a month or two, maybe six months. And really, like the drinkability of this mead, it really depends on per personal preference, right? Yeah. Like if you like strong hooch, like right out of fermentation, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. But if you want something that's a little bit smoother, a little bit more palatable. Um, you know, it doesn't burn the nostrils when you lift the glass, then um, it's really better to let this stuff age, um, either bulk age or bottle age, right? Uh, until it mellows out, smooths out. And so, you know, mead, like it changes over time. You know, the, the jet fuel you get right out of fermentation is not gonna be what it tastes like in a month or six months or even a year to 10 years, right? It ages just like wine. So we're going to pop this in the closet. We're going to try to keep it out and away from sunlight um, or out and away from heat. We're going to stick this in a cool place that, um, you know, not too cold, but not too hot so that we don't get 
a stress yeast, right? Mm -hmm. What are some signs of stress yeast? If you start smelling sulfur, like rotten eggs, yeah, like, like rotten eggs in hot there. spring sort of sort exactly, of smells. Exactly. Yeah. Then you probably got stressed out of yeast, and you want to give it some nutrients or yeah, look it up. Now, <laughs> now we're gonna show them, right? We're oh. gonna show them some troubleshooting metrics here. Um, I see a lot of times shaking or stirring your meat again. Oh yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Well, a lot of times if you, you get stressed out of yeast and it's dying, it means it's not getting enough oxygen or nutrients at the beginning. So if you notice that you got a strong smell like sulfur coming from the closet, then you want to get in there, you want to take the top off and get oxygen into it. So just stir it around until the fermentation actually starts taking place and then your yeast is going to be a lot happier. So what do we do come tomorrow morning if we don't see any bubbles? <laughs> right, so a week. But if we just go a week, two if, weeks, if we, we don't see week, anything. Uh, we'll probably add some nutrients and see if we can get it to start. But if not, we might repitch the yeast. Just and we'd just be able to throw a whole new bag in? Yep. And see if that works. If that doesn't work, then there's probably some sort of like chemical in there, like the water wasn't good or your temperature is way off or the yeast is dead and you just like use bad yeast. All right. And you probably want to start from scratch. All right. Well, it sounds good. We're going to put, throw this in the closet and we will keep you guys updated. So check back in in just a little bit. All right. So that's it. That's all we've got to do. But it looks like we are all out of time for today. So we want to try to walk you guys through any troubleshooting that might have happened over like the next couple of days. What could go wrong? Could stall. Could stall. Might smell some sulfur or some off gassing or something. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to walk you through that. If we have anything that comes up in, in this mead, we're going to walk you through it. Um, if you have any other questions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, click like, subscribe. Uh, we want to keep showing you guys how to make mead and stay tuned because we'll have a next video coming out pretty soon.